Good afternoon, everybody. It's me, David Lee Brown from the internet. How you doing? Thank you for letting me into your homes and your phones. Wow. It is a tragedy that I was never a rapper. Anyway, uh, this video is sponsored by me, so you can check out my website, davidleebrown.odoo.com, where you can read a little bit about my life's vision and mission. There's also free teaching available, uh, music to download if you enjoy the music that plays underneath all of my videos. Just mostly instrumental music, hours of instrumental music to undergird your prayer, meditation, journaling, doing something. It's meant to be like an underneath background track for something else you're doing. And the primary purpose is to help you put your focus on the Lord. And so that music's available and the link is in the website. Also, you can purchase my book, Hearing Love, which is a life application commentary on the greatest commandment to hear the Lord and love him. And then if you enjoy the work in the ministry of my channel, you can support my family and I either on Patreon or you can give through the local ministry's website in the Love Offering Fund. All that's available on the website and that link will be in the description. But uh, today is a special day, not just because I'm doing a really cool Bible with you, like a super cool Bible, but uh, it is my 21st wedding anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to present to you Mr. and Mrs. David Brown. Allie and I have been married for 21 years today, and I was 19, she was 20, and I was brand spanking new in the Air Force. <laughs> Beautiful journey, lots of ups, lots of downs, but... I think we've finally figured it out in these last couple years, and I'm just having the time of my life. I'm still married to my dream girl. So anyway, happy anniversary to me and my wife. Uh, if she watches this video, I love you, honey. And uh, I will see you in a little bit when you get done with your appointment and I get done filming this Bible review. But by the time this is posted, our anniversary is probably gonna be over. But uh, anyway, today, as I'm filming is our anniversary. But uh, I have a really, really cool Bible. This is a Holman, super ultra galactic thin. I might be misnaming it a little bit. Ultra thin reference edition by Holman. This was printed and bound in the 80s. And so one of the reasons I do videos on stuff that's not available anymore. I got saved in 2009 when I was in my late mid-20s. But before that, my grandpa was a pastor, my uncle was a pastor. My parents always had us in church. You can read a little bit more about my testimony in chapter five of my book, but my parents always had us in church. And so I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And in the 80s and 90s, you had these nice leather Bibles that were sewn really well. They didn't fall apart. They had these nice thick covers. Even the paste down, like this one's just a paste down liner. Everything just feels amazing. Like the Bible pages actually feel like Bible pages to me where they're lightweight and thin. I have no clue what the GSM is. The opacity was great though. You didn't have a problem reading the Bible. They were just nice, good old, well-built Bibles. Well, fast forward through my rebel years and trying to be an atheist. I gave that a real good college try. Uh, it didn't work out so well for me and my atheism did because I fell in love with Jesus. Oh my goodness, I fell in love with Jesus. That's in chapter five of the book. Anyway, when I fell in love with Jesus, and I started getting Bibles that were available to me in 2009, I'd read them. And now I'm talking like I fell in love, so I'm reading hours a day, like up to 14, 16 hours a day sometimes. I would call into work and use sick time sometime, and maybe this isn't like the most honest thing, but I was new, I don't know what to do, and uh, I just wanted to be with him. And so, I would use sick time sometimes, not all the time, to call into work just to read my Bible all day. On my days off, if I didn't have to do something else, I was no kidding reading my Bible all day. So I was really, really using my Bibles. And so I was getting what was available in 2009 and everything was just falling apart. And I'm like, what in the world? And I, my soul was longing for just those good old 80s and 90s Bibles that I grew up with that were just like, Amazing. I remember my grandpa bought me a Cambridge genuine leather 
uh, King James Bible when I was in fourth or fifth grade, and by the time I was in sixth or seventh grade, I don't know if I left it at a church somewhere and it just never appeared or what happened to that thing, but that Bible vanished. And I had been on a quest to replace that one and couldn't find a Bible in good enough quality back in the early 2000s or 2009. And I was just so disappointed. I'm like, what have they done to Bible production? It's not like they used to be. And uh, I love what's going on now. Started seeing a little bit better quality runs and then all of a sudden like Skylar and the Premium Bible and Alan started getting popular again and the Bible Design Blog just everything exploded and quality just went through the roof again. And so what's being produced modern day is incredible and nothing like I'd ever seen growing up but there's still just something about those good old, they don't make them like they used to Bible Bibles. And this is one of those. It's, the cover is just incredible. It's so Solid. The binding is solid. I mean, this thing was built and obviously used. Get out of here. It's obviously used, but this thing is just broken in. It's not broken. You know, sometimes you get old Bibles where it's like, that's going to be a good rebind. And some of them you're just like, man, this is a gem from that time period. I cannot rebind this one. And even the ribbon on this one is so charming to me. And I'm not replacing the ribbons. I'm not touching it. I'm keeping it as is. I love this marbled brown, genuine leather. The grain is just incredible. And again, the pages, they're just, they're used. So they're those nice, crispy, soft Bible pages. You know, it's gonna fold. I'm not folding the spine. I don't even think you can. This one's so thin. So anyway, I bring these in videos to show you some of these just good old Bibles that you can look for on eBay. And so I found this one on eBay for like, can't remember if it was 25 or $35 of money. And uh, I don't check eBay all the time, maybe two or three times a year max. Uh, and I'll just get on and see if anything cool's showing up. And sometimes people know they have something special and the price is way up there. And I'm like, well, uh, someone will find the treasure. But every once in a while you come across something like this where it's just a few bucks and it's just a good old like wow we awesome awesome bible and so you can still find stuff like that and to me i think the history and the way that it's made is just incredible but again this one's holman and it's an ultra thin now when i say ultra thin it is thin it is super duper de duper thin and uh even though it's thin, this is one of the things I love about these old Bibles. Even though it's so thin, when you open it up, like the opacity, like how do they get Bible paper that thin with opacity this good? They did it in the 80s, they did it in the early 90s, and it was after the early 90s things started tapering off quality wise, but they did it back then. Like why do we have to get such thick GSM to get such good opacity now? Like, what has changed in the paper game? I do not know, but I'm just kind of want to ask these questions because look, look at how thin this is. And the opacity, it's just mind blowing. Like, how is it so good? And so this is, again, they don't make them like they used to. Um, and so everything about this is just perfect. This is a paragraph, which is interesting for the New American Standard. You usually don't see paragraph. Most of them I've come across have been verse by verse, but this is a paragraph, double column, center reference. So very, very similar layout to the old Moody Press, except the Moody Press was verse by verse. And so for those of you who have seen my old Moody Press Bibles, I have one that hasn't been rebound and I have two Moody Press Bibles that have been rebound. And the reason I have loved these old Moody Press New American Standards is they're just that perfect size, five and a half by eight and a half and an inch, seven eighths to an inch. Not bigger than an inch, because then they start getting into chunky monkey territory, and I don't really like chunky monkeys, especially if the footprint is this small. But this one kind of goes in the other direction, same footprint size, five and a half by eight and a half, and I know it looks smaller in the video, but there's a full yap on this one, no yap on this one. Same footprint, but this is so much thinner. So they made room for it in the typeface, so the font's a little bit small, the notes are a little bit more smeshed together, but still flows really nice. And I, one of the reasons I love these is just 
when you don't have a lot of space and you're packing a lot of stuff, I mean, this just slides in so nice in between clothes and stuff, and you don't have to worry about, oh no, am I gonna scratch my gold gilding? Anyway, I love traveling with Bibles like this because they are solid, they are so solid. But uh, again, very similar size to the Moody Press, similar layout to the Moody Press. This particular Moody Press has been rebound by Adrian at AE Bibles, which has also been extremely solid, but still just that good old 70s paper that I don't know what GSM it is, but the opacity is outstanding on these old Moody presses. And so anyway, you can kind of get a feel for, I guess the size difference on these ultra thins compared to the Moody press. I mean, this ultra thin, I'm telling you, is thin. When you see it in person, it is shockingly like, oh wow, we, it's almost thin, like pocket-sized Bible thin, but then it's got the five and a half by eight and a half footprint on it. So it's just a real unique edition of the New American Standard that I found on eBay. So anyway, wanted to share that one with you. I've got some other old Bibles that uh, I'll love to share with you. But uh, anyway, if you don't check eBay for just good old Bibles, you should check eBay for good old Bibles. And when I say good old Bibles, I'm looking for genuine leather, and it's most likely paste down. I haven't found an edge line binding that's that old unless Cambridge did some stuff, but I don't have old Cambridge stuff. Most of my Cambridge stuff is newer. But uh, anyway, I'm looking for genuine leather printed somewhere in the 70s, 80s, or the early 90s. After it gets past 1994 in the printing, I get a little suspect. But these are out there and they're great finds. You can find just such gems at half price books on eBay. Um, sometimes the Bible marketplaces are things guys and gals are willing to trade. So anyway, lovely, lovely Bible. Wanted to share that with you. So if you like this super de duper ultra thin, I've seen another one of these in the wild and some of the Bible groups, it's a black one, but really, really cool Bible. And uh, you can be looking for that on eBay or wherever, but uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching another Bible video with me. I'll see y'all next week. Y'all have a lovely rest of your year. Peace out.